So hello, um, my name is Sarah Seastone and this is the first demo of a six week work cycle that began on July 29th. Um, the work cycle is for the Bento application, search, search application, um, the request application and controlled digital lending. The team is comprised of developers from the Access team, Chris Beer, Jesse Keck, Jack Reed, and Camille Villa, and developers from the Library Systems team, Shelly Doljack and Darcy Rueda. Camille Villa is the tech lead, and I'm serving in the role of product owner. Mark Marianzo is our DLSS direct liaison. And the focus of the work cycle is really threefold. Improvements to the Bento search application, work on the SearchWorks request application to keep it secure and responsive, and complete analysis and implementation on controlled digital lending, particularly in support of course reserves for fall quarter 2020. The high level goal of the work cycle is to better integrate resources for remote learning and research. So for today's demo, sprints one and two have been devoted uh, to the Bento application and a little bit of context on Bento. Um, the Bento search tool was developed um, in the same work cycle as Articles Plus in the summer of 2017. And at the time, it was determined that a Bento search tool would really help us um, support researchers now that we were introducing yet another search tool to the portfolio for Stanford libraries. So we had SearchWorks, we had the library website, and then we were adding Articles Plus. And it was thought that there was maybe already some confusion between having multiple search tools and that a bento bot search tool would really help. Um, the Articles Plus integration took much longer than an anticipated in that work cycle, and the bento work really ended up at the tail end of the work cycle um, and was a bit hurried. And there's really been no dedicated work cycle to the application since then. The Bento is an open source gem that was developed by NCSU. And what we're finding at this time is that we've got additional tools that we'd like to expose for researchers in the form of libguides and in exhibits. And we have the opportunity to really do some, um, some improvements to the application as well as add those two search tools in. Um, we've also received feedback from users who really expected many more digital resources to be discoverable via Vento. And so this is our opportunity to address that. And we have APIs that we can use now to improve the search tools that we do expose in the Bento. So today's demo, um, Camille is gonna talk through some of those improvements that we've made in especially regarding accessibility. Jesse's gonna talk through some metadata improvements uh, in the SearchWorks API. Camille's gonna talk about the LibGuides um, integration. Jesse's going to walk us through um, exhibits and adding that as a in the search box. And then we'll finish up with Camille talking about, um, I guess, some more accessibility updates. So with that, Camille, I think you're up first. So uh, one of the questions that the access team has kind of really been working through for the last year or so is how do we better incorporate accessibility into our development process. Um, right, so web accessibility covers a lot of different aspects. It can involve screen reader navigation, um, users who don't use a mouse and mostly navigate by their keyboard, it can deal with issues like um, color contrast. Uh, so there are a lot of kind of different aspects of accessibility to cover. And as much as possible, we want to especially make our public facing tools that are used by researchers and students to be as accessible as possible. Um, so uh, 
before this work cycle began, uh, Jennifer Vine did an accessibility audit of our Bento application and selected several issues to kind of put up front and to kind of prioritize those um, even before some of the new integrations that we added. Okay, so I'm going to um, be using a screen reader uh, that's uh, going to be using VoiceOver, which is Mac OS X's um, kind of default screen reader option. So I'm just going to say um, for anyone who's listening to this recording, you may want to turn down your volume. Uh, it's going to get a little noisy here. Um, but I hope that this um, provides some useful examples of how screen reader users navigate, uh, could navigate Bento and some of the enhancements we've made. Uh, so the first two examples are kind of removing noise for screen reader users. So one second here while I turn on the screen reader. Voice up. List two items, skip links, navigation, link. Skip to search, link, skip to search. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control, option, space. Okay, so you can see that um, I'm, so I'm hitting tab here. Link, skip to search, skip links, navigation. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control, option, space. So one example here, um, an affordance that helps both uh, users navigating by keyboard and our screen reader users is uh, the skip to search or skip Visited to link. main content. Skip to main content. Chrome has new window. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control, option, space. All right. So if I'm a user who is pretty familiar with this site, I don't want to have to tab through the entire menu to get to what's important to me. So I'll follow this link and it jumps ahead down into the page. So there's a lot of information on this page and I can navigate it, you know, element by element. Link, link, article, visited, link, link, web, link, you know, you are currently on a link. To click this link, press control, option, space. Gets um, pretty pretty cumbersome, right? If especially as you're going through search results where you might have dozens or hundreds of links to choose from. So one thing that a screen reader user might do is uh, pull up a list of the headings on this page. Navigation headings menu. You are currently in a voiceover menu. This is a list of voiceover menu options. To navigate up and down the list, use the arrow keys. To choose a menu item, press return. To close the menu, press escape. Okay, so what we have here are a list of headings. And so it'll actually um, indicate the hierarchy of these headings. So if I go over to catalog. Heading, heading level two, catalog. Tells me that it's a level two heading. As I'm scrolling through these level three headings, you may notice that one of these items does not belong. Heading level three, books, media, physical and digital resources. Heading level three, link, fish. Heading level three, link, fish. Sound. Heading level three, link, fish. So there are four items at level three and three of those items are links to articles, great. Um, but one of them, uh, books, he media, heading level three, books, media, physical and digital resources. But this one is actually just, um, it's a subheading. It's um, a little bit of dis added description, but it isn't really um, a child of catalog. And it isn't something that the user can select. So in the new version of Vento, we, rem uh, we changed the HTML markup to make this menu a little less noisy. You are currently on a list. Inside now in Fish Vertical Line, Search Vertical Line, Stanford Libraries, Google Chrome, Headings Menu, Chrome has new window. You are currently in a voiceover menu. This is a list of voiceover menu options. Heading level one, heading level two, catalog. You can see in the new version of Bento, we have moved that description out of the H3 tag. 
And so we have a slightly more straightforward um, list of headings. You are currently on a text element. And so here's another example. Um, so in our catalog results, we have a couple of facets to choose from. And these results are separate, separated by this dot character. So as a cited user, you know, that's um, even a, a little visual flourish, but it's actually quite noisy for a screen reader user. So as I'm navigating through these links, you will also hear the dot character um, dis, uh, described to the screen reader user. Results include group. You are currently in a group. Link, book, 36,791. You are end of, results include, group, middle dot. You are, results include, group, link, map, 1,717. End of, results, middle dot. Results include, group. You are currently in a group. Yeah, so that's kind of noisy. So in the new version of Bento, we removed those dot characters, and it's a little more straightforward to navigate that list. You are currently list three items level two. You are currently on a list. To move between items in this list, press control option right arrow or control option left arrow. Uh, the underlying markup has also changed, so that makes it a little more straightforward to navigate this um, navigate this group of links. Link book thirty six thousand seven hundred link map one thousand seven hundred link journal slash periodical one thousand one hundred twenty nine three of three. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control option space. So you can hear that um, there that uh, in the old example, we were navigating into groups and out of groups and running across dots. It was pretty noisy. Um, and so now in the new version of Bento, it's much more straightforward. Uh, there are three links and that's all the information that is needed. Okay, so those were two examples where we made things better for screen reader users by removing noise and removing content. In the next example, I'm going to uh, show an example where we added additional context for screen reader users. So we were just navigating the page with the headings menu. So that's a great kind of overview of the page. Another way a user might navigate the page is by um, listening to this list of links. Links menu. So I'm going to go down link to link. This See list. all 41,891 results. Okay, so uh, looking at this or listening to this in the links menu, uh, we have this results. Uh, we we have this results link, but we don't have the associated context. So it's hard to differentiate that link from a very similar link below. Link, link, link. see all 7,334,629 results. Right, so I'm not getting much context for that link either, which is actually for the article results. So to give some additional context, we made some updates to the markup in the new version of Bento. So let me go over there. Load link, my account. Voice over off. Okay, so visually you can see that in new Bento, this, uh, this layout is still very similar. We have our see, see all 41,000 results we have our, um, okay. So visually in Bento, you can see that the text of this button is still the same. See all 41,000 results. Uh, but we've added some additional context for screen readers. Voice up. List two items, skip links, navigation, links menu. You are currently in a voiceover menu. This is a list of voiceover menu options. To navigate up and Chrome has new Link, visited, link, see all 41,891 catalog results. All right, so um, we have injected a little bit of extra text so that someone who is going through this list of links understands that these results are catalog results. 
and we've done the same thing for all of the other uh, searchers. Link. 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 See all three million nine hundred seventy-six thousand four hundred thirty-one article results. And so we've done the same for articles. Okay, so that was a quick tour of some of the accessibility changes that we've made to Bento. I hope that gives folks more context into um, how these small changes actually make a huge difference uh, for, for users who are using screen readers. Now let's move on to some of the visual design changes that we've made this sprint. We have changed the appearance of the banner. Uh, so we have Stan the Stanford Libraries logo up top. And this really brings Bento more into line with the library website, search works, exhibits. Uh, we just want to make the branding experience more consistent across our web properties. You can also see that we've really um, enhanced this summary of uh, the types of results that you can see in Bento and the number of results associated with, with each of those. So we've increased font size and um, made this more apparent. We've also moved the search box um, up here into the banner. Uh, some of you may, that this, this may seem pretty familiar. This is very similar to how we've implemented this in SearchWorks. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Jesse Keck. Um, so uh, I'd like to show some of the improvements that we've made uh, to the um, catalog uh, and articles boxes. Um, in the way of kind of the, the metadata that's displayed um, for them. Um, at first, uh, I'll show uh, for uh, the catalog search results. Um, we've included some additional metadata, such as the author and the imprint statement um, that you can see uh, in these results, uh, as well as pulled in links to uh, the online resource itself for material that uh, was online. Previously, the user would have to click on the title to go to the search works record and then get to the online resource from there. Um, now they can jump right from the Bento um, if they're looking for uh, uh, an online resource. Um, I would also uh, like to show um, one of the other things that we're pulling through um, this new uh, with our the new um, search works API improvements uh, that we have taken on to support the um, the Bento work that we've done is also to um, indicate when an item's online link uh, is available to us via this temporary access agreement that we're um, that we're currently under. So we're able to uh, indicate that on these records, provide the link, um, and kind of make the call out that you know this is this uh, digital copy uh, might be available available to us um, only temporarily. So uh, also, I wanted to show, um, in, in addition to the catalog results, um, over on the right-hand side, uh, the Articles Plus results, um, we've also made some improvements um, in pulling in some author information. Um, we're pulling an abstract in now, um, and also kind of back on this uh, other search result, although it might not be obvious, but um, there were some cases um, where this, this um, kind of publisher statement that we have here uh, was not having the title of the, the journal titles italicized in every case. Um, this is mostly due to some inconsistencies with the backend data provider um, that uh, through the API that we use to get our articles results. Uh, um, we make some improvements in the SearchWorks code base uh, when we would present these to end users. So um, we worked on making sure that we could also uh, produce those improvements to their data to make it more consistent with the ita uh, italicizing the titles uh, through the API as well as to our, um, to our, our end users. Um, and I will stop now and pass it back to Camille. All right, so the next thing I wanted to demonstrate here is the new LibGuides integration. So this um, this new interface explicitly kind of highlights guides as um, a type of content that is separate from uh, other items on the library website. 
And so this is powered by the LibGuides API. So uh, LibGuides performs a full text search and returns several results to us. So you can see here uh, for my search for fish, uh, it, we've received three different guides and I can click on this show 20 guides to see additional results and then close it to collapse it. So another option I have is to move my search from Bento to the native LibGuides interface. And so you'll see here, um, it's a very different search experience inside of LibGuides. We have received the same results um, relevance wise uh, for uh, course guides, right? So here's uh, this class on domestication, same course guide. But you can see that inside of LibGuides, we're getting more specific information about where in that guide our search term appears. So you get this highlighting, uh, we get information about um, subheading inside of that guide. You'll also see um, several uh, filters that can be applied. So this is similar to the difference between seeing catalog results in Bento versus viewing them in SearchWorks. And this is one of Bento's kind of central design um, challenges is how do we balance the need to show users a lot of different kinds of information and give them enough metadata, enough um, context that they can decide whether something is worth exploring further. So how do we balance that with, um, you know, not overwhelming them or not privileging one type of search over another inside of this interface. Great, uh, thank you. Um, so uh, as uh, Camille uh, just showed, um, particularly with the, uh, the, the LibGuides um, result, uh, we've added a new box for uh, searching um, exhibits from our, our spotlight at Stanford, or, uh, which is available at exhibits.stanford.edu. Um, I've uh, executed a search here for photography um, just to kind of show uh, some, some results here. Um, we've implemented the same pattern uh, as in the LibGuide. So uh, we have a, uh, a button here that allows you to toggle once we have more than three to see um, kind of the, all, all the results that came up for this particular uh, search. Um, we also have the ability to, um, to link out. So if I were to click um, to search photography and all exhibit items, um, this is a, a slightly different in that here we're searching kind of um, for exhibits and uh, you know, primarily based on the exhibit title and subtitle. Uh, but this link actually drops you into a search uh, for items across all exhibits. Um, you can kind of think of this uh, as the difference between the two options in the drop down here where um, the bento box are, is kind of searching exhibits by title. Um, and then the link that we're dropping you into is the uh, find items in all exhibits search. Um, all of these, uh, as you can see, we pull the thumbnail in and these uh, are links to um, the particular exhibits themselves and are very similar to how the autocomplete uh, works and when you are searching exhibits by title. And that is um, not a coincidence. This particular feature is actually built on top of the same autocomplete API that we're using to drive uh, that feature in exhibits. Um, so. Um, yeah, and we, you know, we, we, we've, uh, so far we've just pulled the uh, title and subtitle and kind of very, very similarly to, um, to that feature there. And I think that's it that I have to show on the exhibits block. And that concludes today's demo for the Bento work cycle. So we are still doing some additional testing on the guides and exhibits integration, so we hope to have those out um, to the public soon. And we will uh, provide some additional updates next week. Thank you.